It's a beautiful day in Stockholm, and here's my ride for the day. Just your run-of-the-mill Finnair A330, you may say, but hold on just a second. This is one of the few Finnair planes that have been refitted with brand new cabins, and we're going to be testing out the new business class from Stockholm to JFK today. You may have already heard that this seat does not recline. Is that going to work over eight hours of flying? It's time to find out. Look at these queues for security at Arlanda. The worst I've ever seen. I know we all want travel to be back, but I'm almost longing for the days when I was all but alone at the airport. Anyway, thanks to the magic of video editing, I can skip you all straight to the plane. No waiting around or queuing or any of that. Welcome on board Finnair's refitted A330 with the brand new business class product. I had seen this seat on the A350 in the hangar in Helsinki a couple of months ago. Uh, but they've just started actually flying this thing, and luckily for me, they're flying it out of Stockholm to New York. And uh, doubly cool to see how it translates to the A330 as well, slightly narrower cap. But anyway, extra fun to get to fly this over several hours, sit in it, see how it goes, how the hours pass. I think it's close to an eight-hour flight today. Uh, and then we'll be coming back tomorrow uh, on the overnight. A little bit shorter, but we'll get to test how it is to sleep. This cabin is beautiful, so let's have a little look around. We've got the Ethela glasses for pre-departure and the usual amenity kits. I'm told the new linens with a different look are on their way. For now, we have the usual Finnair blue blankets and pillows. What's new here is that one of the pillows uses memory foam, which is very useful for getting comfortable in the seat. One drawback of the A330 is the older overhead bins that fit a lot less compared to the A350. At least up here in business, it shouldn't be much of an issue. And in case you were wondering, the new seats are slightly narrower but with slightly more seat pitch on the A330 compared to the A350. In any case, I'd say you'll barely notice any difference. Just about everything is new here from the seat to the service offering, and we'll get into all of that. Now it's time to take off. Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, also on behalf of Coffee. This is Captain Mikola from speaking, and uh, welcome to this Finnair Airbus 330 on our flight to New York, JFK. Hello, everyone. We're happy to welcome you on board Finnair. Before departure, we kindly ask for your attention as we go through the safety features of this aircraft. For your own safety, please stay focused for the next few minutes even if you're already familiar with the safety instructions. Our crew has been trained to ensure your safety and comfort on board. You must always follow the instructions given by our crew. You may switch to normal mode after landing. All other electronic devices, such as laptops, must be switched off and stowed for both takeoff and landing.
I like how Finnair lays out a timeline for the flight on the screen. It gives people an idea of what to expect and when. Hot towels are much appreciated, and last time I flew SAS, they were serving nuts in a package. Compare that to this lovely looking ramekin. An all new list of drinks and this lovely cabin to enjoy them in has Finnair hitting it out of the park from the outset, at least if you ask me. The seat is gorgeous. We already knew that though. I haven't really had a chance to settle in and feel it out for kind of lounging around yet because I've been so busy testing everything out and getting shots. But we do have the new glassware to uh, sample and it's gorgeous. Maybe probably not as iconic as the other, you know, how, how could it be? Uh, but they also have some new cocktails, including this one, which comes in a can. Northern Blush. It's very subtle. Lingonberry gin and orange peel. Not too sweet, and I love the, uh, the attempt to sort of rethink the service and offer some new stuff. It's great to have a whole new range of food and drinks to test out compared to the last flight I did a couple of months ago. The passenger bit of turbulence, seatbelt sign is on, so that gives us a good chance to kind of sit here and look through the different features of the seat. There's no uh, pamphlet or card to show you the different pieces of it. I guess there's a seat guide in the entertainment system, which I haven't taken a look at yet. But what I've discovered so far uh, includes right here, there's a little space open up panel like this, and inside you have USB C and USB A. The USB C I'm a big fan of, charging the phone up pretty fast. Uh, headphones, they have Bose headphones on this one. It's funny because in the last one they had the kind of generic, I don't know what headphones that didn't really work, and I mentioned that I use the Bose instead. Well, now I can use the airline's Bose if I want to, to plug directly into the system and a little remote here as well. They also have wireless charging on the table here. And then we have little storage pockets around. The storage pocket down here, uh, kind of towards the aircraft wall, is very useful. You can put a bottle of water in there, it fits perfectly. You can put your big headphone pouch or whatever else. Uh, it fits a lot of stuff, so that's great. That's something that you don't get uh, on most business class seats. So there's a whole space under which I guess would be good for putting shoes. Really not much else. It looks like a good place to lose things. I wouldn't go putting a laptop down there. At least, not a good idea for me. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Nice little space. I'm plenty comfortable so far, leaning back on this memory foam pillow. And then there's another pillow as well. And a mattress pad, although the mattress pad does not look very thick. I was hoping for something a little more deluxe. I decided to start using a decibel meter on flights. I think it's going to be interesting to compare. 73 decibels here in business. I'll be curious to compare it to an A350 in the future. I'm convinced it will be quite a bit lower. What do you think? By the way, this button may look like a seat upright recline button, but remember, these seats don't recline. This is actually to release the dining table. Let's move on to the meal service, which I find is much improved. It's as if Finnair responded to most of the criticisms I had in last week's video about the food. You can click the link up top to watch that video now. There's now a third option for main dish on the menu, and there's a choice of desserts. Portions are also the right size now. Everything served here was delicious. I asked for all of the desserts, and I'm glad I did. The cheese was really good, and I'm not even a cheese super fan. The other two were delicious too, and I appreciate that Finnair has rooibos tea. To continue the drinks fest here, I've ordered a couple more things because everything sounds so interesting. So here we have a uh, Finnish dessert wine. I didn't even know that was a thing. Let's get the name here. Valamo XO. Fascinating. Let's see how it is. Wow. It's like something in between a port wine and a kind of Christmas mulled wine you'd get in Northern Europe. Quite delicious, although very rich and sweet. 
and this one is the lingonberry uh, cocktail they have which uh, I forget actually what the ingredients are exactly but it's a special kind of lingonberry liqueur and tonic water I believe Oh wow it's a little bitter kind of like a Negroni but not too strong nice it's the tonic plus the lingonberry I mean I could have fun just drinking all these drinks the whole flight the whole eight hours but alas I have to do some other things too like test out the experience of lounging around in this seat which I guess I could do while I drink too that's the whole idea that's supposed to be like being at home like being in your comfy armchair and taking it easy so you put up the little leg rest kind of thing to make a continuous flat surface and you just kick your shoes off and hang out so I'm gonna try that for a little while and see how comfortable it is I think that's been one of the bigger questions can you just relax hang out watch something read something and does it work without any recline feature we shall see almost forgot. We're going to do a new thing in this video and uh, this Mario Meco amenity kit, instead of opening it up showing you what the contents are because it's pretty standard stuff, uh, we're going to offer this as a giveaway. So uh, if you're watching this and you'd like to have this sent to you, like the video, hit subscribe if you haven't already and uh, leave a comment and mention Mario Meco. That's the code for the giveaway. Everyone who does that will be entered into the drawing and uh, I'll pick a lucky winner and send it out next week. So I'm standing in the premium economy cabin and there's nobody in here on this flight. Not that surprising because a lot of people don't even know yet that Finnair offers a premium economy and uh, it might get a little confusing with the fact that there's economy, economy comfort with extra legroom, and this brand new product. People don't know that Finnair uh, has this now in a handful of planes. So uh, it's a shame if they don't because it looks very, very comfortable. Especially when it's empty, of course, but I think even with a full cabin. So now we're in the bulkhead. I guess this is 21L. I don't know, row 21 anyway right side window seat tons of legroom more than in most uh entry us domestic first class i.e business class or uh euro business by far i would say you also get these handy little products it's the other headphones not the bose but that's what they're offering in business class on the old Venera product and you get this neck pillow check it out I mean, I'm not a neck pillow person, but having it handed out to you seems like a great perk. And they get the same amenity kit as business class, it looks like. Plus, you get these winged headrests that you can kind of customize. And you're still a little bit ahead of the engine here, so you have a, a nice view back toward the wing and out toward the ground below. I'd say this is a fantastic looking product. I don't know what they're pricing this like, but... I would happily fly in this as well. Especially with nobody around. <laughs> a little mini cabin to yourself. That's another nice thing about it. It's very much a little mini cabin. They draw the curtains and there are walls. Unlike some other airlines, actual dividing walls uh, to separate economy from premium economy. So it does feel like an exclusive little separate space. Really top marks for this. I mean, I'm not sitting in it for eight hours straight, but I think this would be great. Looks like it's ever so slightly louder back here, a few decibels higher. middle sets of seats where you would probably want to sit if you were traveling with someone and a lot of these kind of seats where it's one two one in a cabin like this uh, it's just really hard to
to talk to your seatmate, especially in the reverse herringbone configuration. But if you look at this, when this divider is down, it's like you have an extended living room with your traveling partner, which is great. And if you, for some reason, got stuck here uh, without traveling with someone, you're by yourself and you didn't want to be with them, you can just press this button over here and this comes up just to the right height. I mean, if you're exceptionally tall, you might be able to see over, but you'd have to make an effort. So I think this is a great solution to uh, the issue of privacy, but also allowing for some conversation between people traveling together, which is something you really miss on a lot of newer business class seats. Okay, so we're now in lounging mode. <clears throat> Tray table is put away. We have a few drinks and snacks over here on the table. Leg rest extender piece is shifted up and the little extra thing that completes the sort of flat surface is also pulled up. And uh, just like when I tried this seat on the ground a few months ago, it's remarkable how it does kind of invite you to kick your shoes off and sit cross-legged or just kind of stretch out in a, in a kind of comfy home-like way. It really does do that. Something about the design makes you want to sit like that. So the next step of this is to have a longer term evaluation, a couple of hours of watching a movie and how is it to get comfortable. But just initially, as when I tried out this seat on the A350 on the ground briefly, uh, it's just a very inviting space. It's a place I want to hang out for a while and, and in the first few minutes it feels very comfortable. Check back with you in a couple of hours with the update. Does it hold up? We'll see. I'm also very pleased to find they've added mid-flight snacks in the form of little sandwiches. That's a great addition. So I spent a couple hours just kind of hanging out in the seat now, uh, watching a movie. And my impression after a few hours is that if you're someone who really likes to spend time in the kind of partially reclined position, you might find yourself a little frustrated here because there just aren't enough ways to prop yourself up comfortably and be kind of halfway reclined without finding that you're kind of slouching or putting too much pressure on certain parts of your body. So if you're sitting up and watching a movie, it's very comfortable. You're very nicely cocooned. The pillows are nice, the memory foam pillow especially. And I think if you lie down all the way, it's also very comfortable and spacious. But that in-between zone, I haven't been able to find a super comfortable way to do it yet. So, uh, reserving judgment still a little bit, but I think that's something I'm noticing here. So if you lie down like this, where you're almost all the way down, head propped up by a pillow, it's pretty nice. It's pretty comfortable. You have padding in the right areas, a little pillow under your back. But you can't see the screen so well, because it doesn't tilt. And that would have been a key thing, I think. Could have made that tilt a little bit downward and this position could have been a good one for hanging out not sleeping but anyway pretty comfortable if you were gonna read a book or something this would be a nice way to do it For now, there are three A330s and three A350s refitted with these cabins. As of late May, they're flying Helsinki to New York, Stockholm to New York, Helsinki DFW, Helsinki Singapore, and soon Helsinki Chicago. They'll be adding more in the coming weeks and months. So we're coming into land 
uh, about 15 minutes before landing at JFK, and uh, it's been a nice flight. It's kind of hard to summarize this one. It's it's all so new, and that's one of the nice things about it, that it's very unique. It's unlike anything else. It's definitely a very pleasant place to spend seven or eight hours. And it was funny just now hearing them make the announcement to put your seats in the upright position, typical before landing, just doesn't apply to us. There's nothing to do. You just have to put your seatbelt on, you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, it's a great seat. It's beautiful. It's comfortable to sit in for the most part. Jury's still out for me on, on the lounging part, the sort of in-between lying down and sitting up. But uh, we're going to take the flight back tomorrow, get more of a sense of what it's like to try and sleep in the seat. And I think after that, I'll have uh, more of a complete opinion. So I'm going to leave you hanging a little bit on this one. But I will say that it's as if they went and fixed most of the points I brought up about the soft product that I thought were lacking in the older business class like the food options, the number of options, the size of the portions. They have a little bit of extra in terms of snacks mid-flight. I think they've just gotten all that just right now. And they've continued with the beautiful kind of distinctive thin air design. And that's a big part of it for me. I want it to be an aesthetically pleasing experience. Couple that with getting the right amount of food and the right number of options on the menu. And I think it's, it's really improved. Yeah, overall, great flight. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the return back to Stockholm. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy this landing. Hopefully we get some views. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss next week's installment where we wrap up the review with a test of the overnight flight back from New York to Stockholm. In New York for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.